fake three two one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the pre three two one before the real three two one, which is going on now. Like when they say ready, ready, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. That go. All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Persuasion by the Pint. I'm Jonathan Taylor, along with Sean McCool. And Sean, today, yeah, we've got a, a great guest joining us today. We're going to be discussing the art of selling memberships. Ooh, fancy. What a cool topic, right? Yeah, I like it. Nice so, and fancy. The show, have, I know the show's all about being fancy, so. Yeah, there, there we go. Like, there's we there's the delayed have... response right on cue. Yeah, so, so Eric Russell is joining us today, and he is... Um, International number one best-selling author of the book, The Art of Selling Memberships. Great title. Just happen to have one right there. Look at that. that. You happen to, I thought you sold them all. That's the gold <laughs> edition. See, this is the first one that came out. I was. I had this genius idea to do gold foil yeah. on the spine and on a thing. And I'm like, people are going to eat that up. You know what? Nobody ate nothing up. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't care about the gold foil as much as I did. And it made the cost of the book like three times more. Oh, wow. Lesson learned. No, there's yeah. your first lesson, ladies and gentlemen, right there. <laughs> right out of the gates, we're just, just dropping giving the, value. Giving the lessons. I love it. Love it. Well, uh, we're glad to have you on. We'll get into talking um, memberships and selling memberships and specifically what area you do and then how that applies to other people in other places. But if you had to tease somebody, Eric, like what would be your teaser for this episode? Like how would you tease it without giving away too much? Well, we're going to, uh, that's a good, uh, let's see. What Put you on the gonna, spot. Yeah. I mean, the thing is like selling memberships is probably one of the most difficult sales to make in the world. So if what I'm, what I'll share with you today are some things that help with selling memberships and some things that I've learned over the years. And if you apply them to other areas and they, they do apply to other areas really is, what I'm getting at. So whether you're set, I don't care what you're selling. You will be a better salesperson if you understand how memberships are sold. So we'll we'll get into that a little bit. I like that. I like that a lot. People think it's easy that I thought it was easy when I got started. I'm like, well, that's what the gurus say. Everyone's fat. Let's go. You know, like (laughs) I got a whole bunch of customers out there and they're coming to you saying, Hey, I need to get in shape. How do you mess that up? Like, how does that not turn into a sale? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of reasons why people get apprehensive. They failed at it in the past. You know, there's a well, lot. Don't give too much away. Obstacles. Don't don't give too much away yet, because we got to take care of some business. This is first. The teaser. This yeah. Is the yeah. Teaser. So I'll, I'll keep teasing if, if you don't stop me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, we got to we got to get into the beverages. I know you brought one. Yes. You've been wanting to crack it open. So. Well, that's what I, I was really thinking, man. That's the. If you really want to talk teas, I went out and got this bad boy earlier today from the Paradox Brewery in the Adirondacks, which okay. is in my area. Because I, I was like, I got to show up with something in my area. <laughs> okay. And uh, nice. so, what kind of beer is that? This is a Pilsner. Okay. And I've been like drooling to try this all ever since I got it. All right. You know, and the, my dude's over at Bottle Caps. This is my local little beverage center. Hook Very nice. Up. So, so they um, said try this because this is an awesome beer. Yeah, so let's uh let's crack it open. Do this. See that bad All right, you ready for this? Yeah. Oh, very well, very well done. Up next to the mic. Yeah, man, they're in this podcast style, right? right you are a pro. <laughs> we usually have to he's do da- six, he's done six. some listening. You can tell, yeah. right, Sean? He's- yeah, we have really to uh, pour. Pour's a little tough. It's a yeah, good way to get tough. We've had several accidents on the show that involve laptops and beer. So just yeah, I mean, because you don't really want to have that sound because the sound means there's some, you know, some yeah. uh, bubbles happening and stuff, which is not necessarily going to work when you try to. Uh, That's right. Pour Let's see what that looks like. All right, I'm trying to find some like stats Beautiful. on my beer before we. Yeah, I like that. Just a good clean pilsner. Yep. Mm-hmm. We'll see how it tastes. I like um, the pilsners. I'll be going a little bit darker. What do you got, Jonathan? Because I'm still trying to find exactly what in is in, is in mine. I've got a Founders All Day Vacay. All right, All Day Vacay, which is a uh, a session wheat ale, right? So 
Yeah, I'm getting we're getting bombarded with IPAs and wheat ales <laughs> lately. So that's that's all that's available. Um, but I picked this up. This is brand new this week. Just saw it at the uh, local establishment. So uh -huh. not heavy on the ABVs, only 4.6, 20 IBUs. It says you're going to need. So founders is always a go to if you're yeah. if you can't find anything and you're unsure. Even in the uh, some of these lighter ales, you might as well yeah. say, yeah, I'll go founders, you know, because I know their porters and stouts are, are spot on. Right. But uh, here's a copy from their website. You're going to need a bigger suitcase. All Day VK has arrived. Take a well-earned respite from the mundane and let this session wheat ale whisk you away with a slight summery sweetness, complemented by delicate notes of citrus. Whether it's a stay K or a vacay, it's a perfect companion for any type of adventure. So Very nice. See, we will see. That's Pretty a nice copy, copy right? I, I mean, like it. Yeah, I like that. Did, did you plan that? Do you look for the beers that have nice copy on their website? <laughs> no, we no, no, totally look strictly did. at the cans. The, yeah, we strictly look at the art on the cans. We're That's very shallow. We're okay, very shallow. Because I went to the website for Paradox Brewery. It's a picture of the inside of the brewery and it says Paradox Brewery. Yeah. I, the one uh, I'm looking at right now is the same way. It's like, here's the beer. Here's a picture right. of the can. I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All and right, the font, the rest of the font, because <clears throat> I'm a little older than you are, Eric, is just too small to even read today. So, <laughs> Can't yeah, I, you got I got to use the website because uh, I'll be taking my glasses off. You put yours on, I take them yeah. off. You know? <laughs> what happens with age, man? All right, so I've got a buried hatchet Ooh, stout. I like that. All right. It's literally a buried hatchet. Yeah. <laughs> There's a story behind that name. I, I, I would think so. So the, the brewery is Southern Star Brewing Company out of Conroe, Texas. So this is another local, semi-local. I mean, it's hard to say local when you're in Texas. And it's 1,200 miles across the state, but like, yeah, it's a Texas beer. We'll just go with that. So from Conroe. So it is a stout. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Like you said, Jonathan, trying to get the last of the stouts, but this is a very light, almost like an ale type stout. I do believe. Yep. It's a little, that's pretty dark there. It's pours, it pours light. Yeah. It looks, light. When it's pours light. Being poured. It's, uh, it, it looks great compared to what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, got some nice color to it. All right, gentlemen. So, Eric, we're going to be, after you take a sip, uh, we're going to do a, not to steal uh, another author's phrase, but we're going to do a simultaneous sip uh, okay. after we clink, clink the glasses to the screen here. There we go. Some, there we sometimes go. it's hard to find uh, <laughs> the screen. Mm. So the scale, Eric, is one to five pints. You can do... Up to two decimal points and in any order you want. Yeah, I know the scale, man. I, I listen to you guys, so I know the scale. I like the and, research, um, man. You know, there hasn't been a whole lot of fives on your show. No, there's not. And there hasn't been a six. Uh-oh. <laughs> trying uh -oh. to break the scale. I might break the scale in this one. I really like this one. Um, I don't know. I mean, it... It's got, you know, it's got that, it's crisp. It's, I, I just wonder if I'm a little biased right now because I've been thinking about drinking this <laughs> since I bought it. You know what I mean? It's like, well, we've, you've we've been had primed. some of those that then you open the can. You're like, oh my God, what was this? This is awful. <laughs> so no, it could go either way. It could go either true. way. Um, no, this is good. I would definitely go five. I like, I like, uh, it's not heavy. I feel like I, I'm going to drink two of these minimum today and during this uh, podcast. So yeah. <laughs> that's always a good thing to, to get excited about. Yeah. I also Another brought a second. Five. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think. So if I could give it a six, I would. Yeah, I go. Well, I go above the scale a little bit, but yeah. Um, but then it wouldn't be a scale. It'd be something else. I don't. Right, know and I be. messed it all up. So <laughs> let's just let's just go with a five. It's really really good. So we'll do this. We'll try to get to five pints between the three of us. Cause I got two beers. You've got two beers, Jonathan, you got at least one, if not two, a second hiding yep. there. So yep. we'll, we'll try to get to six pints on the show <laughs> in honor of Eric's score. How about that? that well, so, that's not like a challenge to me. So we got, and I'm a sales guy and, and quotas and goals are, are what we're all about. So 
Absolutely. Yeah. So no on my problem. stout, on my stout, I'm going to do, um, it's a, it's a basic stout with a, just a hint of coffee, not like a coffee stout, but definitely got a mm-hmm. hint of it in there. And since I can't read the copy on the can, I have no idea if it's supposed to be there or not. Um, and I have no idea what the ABV it's not on the can anywhere or on the site. Um, but it is a four pack, so it's gotta be high, whatever it is. Right. So I'm going to give it a solid four, just a nice clean four, not quite a five, but good, good quality stout. Okay. Jonathan. Probably nothing special about this one. I'm going to give this one probably, um, two, seven, okay. two, seven, two, eight, something like that. Yeah. It's nothing, just, nothing that stands out. You know? I know, man. We like our dark beers, don't we? Yeah, we do. <laughs> now, I, you, guys, you know, you I, like- honestly, I went to the, when I went to the local establishment today, I literally, I, I came so close to picking up this, the dragon from last week just because uh, it was so, so good. good. Yeah. Is that, that's one I could just drink every week, but I got to find that. Eric, we had a five. La- it was our first five ever. You're the second. So we've got, we've had two fives in a row. That's incredible. That's a record. I will say last week we're keeping it rolling. Yeah, (laughs) that's right. I will say on Southern stars breweries website, um, Southern star, Southern star brewing. Yep. Um, their gear is really good. I like their gear, like their t-shirts and stuff. I'm gonna have to, I have to snag some of that. Yeah. All right. Well, Jonathan, snag some swag. Should we, uh, 5% or by the way, Oh, five yeah. percent. Okay, you should definitely have two then. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got this too to step up the game a little <laughs> bit if I need to. That's look at him, uh, man. So I got some Jim Beam sitting right next to you. Some Jim Beam honey. It up a little bit. I, I love go. that. That's like right behind your desk. It's always there. <laughs> Listen, sales and copywriting. If you ain't drinking, you ain't doing it right. Okay, exactly. you guys, you guys know that. Yeah. <laughs> That's John. You're, you're in the health industry, though. You know, usually that's that's sometimes frowned upon. Not always, but. Well, look, you got to have your moments, right? You you <laughs> you, you, you have, like, uh, you have uh, your days where you can kind of let loose a little bit. You know, you do Absolutely. your work all week, you're good to go. Moderation, right. moderation, yeah. and everything. Yeah. And hey, I mean, it's just a supplement. That's all it is. Nootro- yeah, it's it a nootropic. That's all it is. Alcohol is a nootropic, basically. See that? <laughs> See, that's good copy right there. That's right. <laughs> I, I could re- I could launch a whole new alcohol empire just talking about it as a new <laughs> for for winding down in the afternoon after a stressful day. This <laughs> one of a kind ancient nootropic discovered by French monks. <laughs> you could some. sell that. Oh, wait, I already have some. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, let's uh, let's roll into learning how to sell memberships. Yeah. But before we do, Eric, we got to find out a little bit about your background Mm -hmm. because anybody that ends up in sales probably couldn't do anything else with their life if it was like me (laughs) or, you know, I mean, not not a lot of people like choose to go into sales. They kind of end up in sales. Is that true for you as well? How'd you, how'd you end up there? Total opposite. Really? It's yeah. So, um, that is true though. You do find that a lot in the fitness industry. There's less of that, though, okay. because you tend to find people who, you know, they have an interest in fitness. They're um, they love it. And it's kind of like I want to I want to help people. I want to, you know, change the world, have a positive impact. So a little bit different vibe with it. I started because my adopted father owned a gym. Yeah. So um, he owned a gym and. He said, hey, I'm going to hook you up with a job selling memberships. And I was like, this is going to be amazing. Because like I said earlier, you know, like this guy, this is the easiest sale in the world. They come in saying, hey, I need to lose weight. And I have exactly what they're looking for, you know. And so I'm just thinking this is going to be amazing. I get 100% commission. So, um, yeah, I remember first week I had a lady come through. She's like, doctor told me I'm going to die, got a, got diabetes and, you know, or pre-diabetes, something, something along those lines. Either she had it or it was, it was soon. And, um, she loved the workout and I'm like counting money over here, you know, like, (laughs) look at me, dude, this is going to be nuts. And, um, show her membership. And then, uh, she's like, okay, cool. You know, let me go talk to my boyfriend and think about it. And, um, yeah, give me a call tomorrow. And I'm just like, 
think about it. You got to think about death. Like, is that really something you got to think about? I mean, <laughs> okay, well, you know, being the amazing salesperson that I am, I just um, counted a sale for tomorrow. You, you know, believed like, her. Yeah. I absolutely have a sale tomorrow already. Look at how awesome I am. It's not even tomorrow yet. You know, and then um, call, no answer, no call back, nothing. So, man, at that if... point, when you're on 100% commission and you times 100% by zero, it's zero, right? <laughs> so, I'm not going to make any money. So, that's one thing. Now, do I quit because I'm in, 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 this was after a little while. I was just wasn't good at it. Mm -hmm. But do I quit? One of the compelling reasons for me not to quit was this was a job that my adopted father gave me. Now, this is a guy who chose me. It's not a guy who just happened to have me. He decided I'm going to help this kid out. And now here I am working towards growing his business. And I can't quit. I got to get good at this. So how so, old how old were you at this time? Fifteen. Like, wow. Okay. Okay. So really? that became my just I just <clears throat> obsessed over sales. It was I I started studying. I started going to seminars, listening to cassette tapes. Back then it was cassette tapes. Yeah. And you had to actually go, like show up in person at a seminar. Like you couldn't do webinars; they didn't exist. Right. You know, and uh, just studied the greats and started fine tuning and tweaking some things and and took a bunch of what I learned and developed a unique process for our industry based on what I'm hearing, what I'm experiencing and just tweaking it, tweaking it, tweaking it until it got to the point where you have a very tough time telling me no, when it comes to, to fitness and, and, and selling memberships. And so I launched my own gyms. Um, at one point we had five locations. Um, and then I decided this, this whole time I used to hire friends which um, if we're going to get into a, a, another really quick lesson, don't do that. Don't hire friends. Yeah. I mean, it's unless they're qualified. Okay. If they got qualifications, cool. I'm hiring like dudes who used to mow lawns and like sure. uh, worked at a, at a, on a pig farm, you know, worked at a video game store and here they are coming in to, to sell memberships for me. But I, I was able to teach them how to do it yep. and they got decent at it. So, I started thinking, you know, man, maybe anybody, maybe I could teach this to everybody and I should write a book, you know? And so in the back of my mind, I just had this idea of writing this book, but uh, I failed English twice in high school. So that was kind of a, a, a sign that maybe I'm not going to be a decent writer, you know? By the way, <laughs> just fun, fun fact for the listeners. <laughs> I also failed English in both seventh grade and 10th grade. I was eighth and 10th. So wow. it, mu it, it must be part of the success formula that nobody talks about. There's yeah, another piece of copy is. for us right there. That's right. Well, you know what it is? If you read the book, it's written in a – it's not written like – uh, like if you're – you could be a fifth grader and understand it. Yeah. It's written like that, you know, and, and not on purpose. I mean, I was kind of actually embarrassed when I found out it was a fifth grade reading level, but um, it works. You know, yep. so I had some he reservations about putting it out. And my wife was just like, you know what? W what's going to happen if you put it out? If no, if you don't sell any, you're, no one's going to think you suck because nobody mm -hmm. knows. Right. Nobody's reading it. Nobody's getting it. I'm like, hmm, yeah, okay, risk kind of low if, if I don't sell it. But if I do sell a bunch of them, well, then everybody likes it. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Let's just rock this thing out, put it out. I put it out and literally the day I launched it. Went number one. Reviews started coming in. People were sharing it, um, and it stayed number one. It, it's still in the top. It, it's a bestseller today. Six years later, um, wow. I screenshot every once in a while because I not that I check it every hour or so, um, but I uh, I know where I rank all of the time, and it's and it's always up there, which is pretty wild considering again, you know, I failed English twice, but it resonated <laughs> with people because there was a process for our industry. Finally, you know, right. like you can listen to the greats like Roger Dawson and and, um, you know, Zig Ziglar and Brian Tracy and Jeff Gittimer, um, which ironically, Jeff, I spoke to Jeff Gittimer when my book came out. It was like speaking to the, you know, the Michael Jordan of your of your <laughs> genre. You know, I, I was like this freaking is this real? Like, is this guy really contacting me right now? Um, yep. 
it was wild. So um it's the little red book guy, right? In the little yeah. black book and the little little book of cha ching. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. him. Yep. And uh yeah, so he messed with me, he's like, Call me. And I called him and uh awesome guy, awesome guy to talk to, and just was, you know, uh we just went back and forth on a couple things. He we had some disagreements, which was interesting because he's like, No, selling's a science. And I was like, Yeah, it, it is a science, but then you get to a point where science becomes art. Like paintings, mm -hmm. painting science. You got to yeah. know colors. You got to know strokes and how things work and all of that good yep. stuff. But there's a point where just having a brush and paint and canvas doesn't make you an artist. Right. I try to tell my wife yeah. this. I got a four-year-old son. Okay. He <laughs> can paint. He's not an artist. The most celebrating his paintings right now. He needs some work. Okay. You know, he might get there someday. We'll see. But sure. right now he's just throwing things together, you know? <laughs> So there's so some let, science you understand to it. Then you get to the art part. So let's let's dive into the book a little bit, Eric, and talk about. So I'm looking at the back cover right now on the old Amazon mm -hmm. since they show us that kind of stuff. It's great invention. What's the rank uh, on Amazon right now? Let, oh, I don't know what the rank see is. Where we're at. You got a lot of reviews though. That's let me see where we're at. Well, especially for our industry, it's one of the most reviewed books in our industry, which is weird. I mean, it's not no Anthony Robbins type reviews where there's like eleven thousand reviews, but mm -hmm. I don't know where it's ranking right now because I just went straight to it. So, all right, I'll um, scroll down and I'll tell you they, where we're they at. changed. They we're number also, 30, number 30 in business sales. There you go. It's nice. It's so good. See, six years later, it's still in the top 50. Come on. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That's uh, that's so, evergreen. Evergreen. So, let me ask you this on your book Does this, can the, anybody in any profession, any industry, I mean, will this work for anyone? I mean, you, obviously, you come out of you come out of the fitness industry, obviously selling memberships and things like that. Um, and continuity, I, you know, I, I love the whole model of continuity. I think it's one of the best models out there to keep people going. You know, keep people involved, and I'm sure always to some degree on any membership model, you've got a degree of of um, People that follow, you know, people fall away from time to time, but the whole process, you know, I love residual, you know, that that's like, I hate, I've always hated like one-time sales, but if you can get like a, you can get a sale that creates residual income and that continues on, that's one of the best models out there. Um, but in your book, you talk about this model, you can apply this to just about anything out there if you, and it's anything. online or offline, correct? Yeah. And it. We have clients from, I mean, they do baseball training to uh, yep. dog dog talking training. Like they teach you how to communicate with your dogs. Mm -hmm. Like some what uh, they uh, boat. It's like a boat uh, membership where you mm -hmm. you know, like when you buy a boat. That the, the the joke is that the times you're the most happiest as a boat owner is when you buy it and when you sell it. <laughs> yep, exactly. Well, they take mm -hmm. away that. <laughs> in between piece because sure. you pay a membership and then what happens is you just say when you want a boat roll up there zip out with a boat come back and you can do it as much or as little as you want to use it pretty pretty cool service so there's a, there's a lot of different types of memberships it works for but it's also something that can be utilized in other industries and in other areas i've consulted with software companies um equipment manufacturers um God, just a just a bunch in the, yeah. in the past six years um, that I've been doing consulting that uh, I didn't actually start out trying to do that. It kind of turned into that. I wasn't one of those guys who said, "Oh, let me let me write a book and develop a funnel and you know uh, you know have an upsell and a downsell right. and a and a coursework." <laughs> I, I didn't. I had a book. It was twenty bucks. So when yeah. I got an email saying, "Hey, we want we want more," I'm like, "More, more what?" More pages? You want me to write some more pages in there? I mean, I don't know what more you want. It's in the damn book. I didn't write it like a brochure. I gave you what I got, man. You know, but they it was like, we want you to train our team. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I just threw a freaking number out there. And they were like, okay, deal. And then I was like, oh, damn, what? how do I train? I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I don't know how I'm going to do consulting. And the dude was in Australia on top of that. So I was like, because it went number one in Australia, too. So I was like, what the heck? I don't so know how to do this. I didn't so you, know how to record with the earbuds. I was trying to do it on Skype. I'm telling you, it was a whole mess. So, so you, I don't even know what you asked me. I just went off on a tangent. I started thinking about that's all right. my background. So, um, so Eric, you, 
on the back of the book, it talks about a five step process anyone can master. So can you walk, walk us through the five steps and then yeah. we might, might dive into some like deeper mm-hmm. stuff, but let's start with the five step kind of outline that people can kind of track and sure. um, we'll go from there. Yeah. But that was what we were getting at. It can work in any industry. Right. That's, exactly. that's what made me go off on a tangent. But anyway, so the five steps. First is you have to have, you have to take leads from being leads to opportunities. Right? So that requires getting them through a, a fear phase. Fear of showing up, fear of, um, well, really, it's, it's, a, it's a fear of showing up. They're, they're afraid that they're the only beginner. They're afraid that they're um, going to show up and be the only person who's out of shape. Um, or let's say it's, it's, um, uh, you know, a parent doing, bringing their kid in for martial arts lessons. The parent's afraid they're going to bring their kid. Why do they bring their kids in? Cause they need discipline and the kid's got ADHD and he's misbehaving in school. So the parent's afraid they're going to show up and their kid's going to be the bad kid and they're going to look like a bad parent. Those right. kinds of things are what you're dealing with on that first step. The second step is about really understanding what it is they're there for. What am I, what is their problem? Not what is my solution, but what is their problem in really understanding it? And then not the problem is the surface of it, but what about that problem do they want, bothers them? And what do they see the benefit of dealing with this problem being right so i want to lose 20 pounds that's just a random number it's it's random because the person coming in isn't even a real number they just say well that sounds like a good number i should be at or they went on google and they said oh i gotta do this minus this multiplied by this and that should be my weight Mm -hmm. but why what if you're there, what are you going to get out of it? What's going to be so great about being 20 pounds lighter than you are now? Oh, I'm going to have a six pack. Now we're getting closer. Mm-hmm. Where's the six pack get us? I can take my shirt off on the beach. We're getting even closer. What's taking your shirt off on the beach going to do? Well, not be embarrassed. Track somebody that I want. You know what I mean? Get some, get yeah. some women. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it, now, now we hit the nail on the head. Yeah. And then what's the problem with where you're at now? Why is it a problem that you aren't attracting the person you want? Male, female, whatever. What's the problem with it? Who cares? We'll, we'll, you know, what's the big deal? Everybody's walking around overweight right now. Why do you want to be so different? Right. Right? That's those are the, those, that's the motivation behind it. So you really got to understand that. And there's some things in there, too, like in our industry that are specific. Most everybody's tried to accomplish this goal and failed. That's a big uh, obstacle for them later when it comes down to paying you money. Yeah. Right. Cause why do I, I've already failed at this before. Now here I am again, I'm about to pay this dude some money. I'm going to end up quitting all over again. You know, so there's some specific things in there and the front of it. Then there's the experience part. Step three is allow them to experience what you got. Whether it's a workout, whether it's a boat, whether it's your software, whatever it is, you you allow them to have that experience. So uh, we've talked about this before, Eric, and I think this is a great point. I think it's way underutilized and, and kind of goes back to the idea of demonstration. You look at the longest lasting commercials we talked about on this show, we've talked about bounty, right? And I think it was David Ogilvy. He said, "Like demonstration sells, right?" Mm-hmm. And Bounty, the quicker picker up, or like they've been, and Pampers and all these, you know, now depends. And it's a it's a two second, three second demo, so you kind of get to vicariously experience what it's like to use the product. Yeah. So, how long in your industry does like this demonstration need to be like, do you take them over to a weight machine and give them 30 seconds? Do you show them a, let them take a spin class? Like, or is it like a three day pass? Like, here's what, here's what's going to happen. Step three is having them. The third step is having them experience it. Right. Right. All, but step two, I'm ending with a negative. Okay. So you're going to tell me why it sucks being 20 pounds overweight. (laughs) 
And you know what that's going to make you feel like? How you terrible. feel? Terrible. Yeah, terrible. Like crap. Yeah. Like whatever. Right? And you're going to you you you're going to have this like lower self-esteem piece that you came in with. Cuz we were just talking about the great things about it. You're going to take your shirt off, you see all these girls flocking to you or whatever, you know. I got to get you back to reality, man. That ain't happening right now, right? <laughs> and yep. so what happens is you go into the workout and you kind of have a little bit of a down feeling. All I need is to get that heart rate up. Get that heart rate up, endorphins start going, you start feeling great about yourself. And it does something that's very, very important. It creates contrast. Because it makes, if you go from an, on a high note to another high note, it's not the same effect. But if you go on a high note and then down, and then you actually work out, and now you're feeling great again, it's like a good movie. Why do they do this in movies? Like the hero comes out and, oh, man, just saved the day, and bam, something hits him. Like a bus from, from, left, from the left just took him out. You're like, oh, my God, that's the end. Dang it, man. I thought this <laughs> dude was going to really do it. Next thing you know, he's like picking the bus up and flying somewhere, right? Yeah. It, it's the same idea. We respond to that. And in that contrast, in that workout, it's a feeling that you can really get. So it doesn't need to be a, a big, long thing. Back in the day when I started selling memberships, we didn't have classes or any of that. At least no one was really taken. I mean, it was back in the day that the aerobics was the class. Mm -hmm. So dudes ain't coming through there and trying to aerobics class out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that wasn't happening. So all I got to do here, hang on to this dumbbell. I want you to do some curls and I want you to walk on this treadmill for three minutes. They come off that thing. Oh, man. How you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. That's three minutes, dude. Imagine if you were, you know, that kind of a thing. I just yeah. need to get the, to elevate their self-image a little bit so they can get a little taste of it. So now, before you before you move on, um, this reminds me of we've talked about this on the show. There's a book by or a <laughs> TED Talk, too, by Nancy Duarte. I don't know if you've seen it, Eric, but she analyzes like the the greatest speeches in history, like the Steve Jobs iPhone launch and the Martin Luther King Jr. speech and Kennedy's moonshot speech. And she's, she noticed the same exact pattern you're talking about. Like it's here's where you are. Here's where you could be. Here's where you are. Here's where you could be. Here's where you are. Here's where you could be. And it's this back and forth movement. So I think it's fascinating that you kind of discovered that on your own and created well, a sales framework around it. Yeah. So, discovery on your own there's there's part of of really developing a process and this is the difference i didn't regurgitate something from somebody else i didn't go oh let me i learned this uh from so and so and here it is yeah. Re repackaged this is that's a lot of guru stuff out there right now mm -hmm. oh i learned this from russell brunson free book plus shipping and boom it's like they don't even try it's instant millionaire right? instant yeah. millionaire like they aren't even trying to do, do different it's literally like He's got, you know, traffic secrets or dot com secrets, whatever the heck he's doing right now. And and I love Russell, by the way. But everybody's secrets now. Yeah. And there's every guru has an X secrets book out. This that's different. This is taking something that you've learned, reading books on psychology, reading books on neurolinguistic program, taking courses on it, going to seminars on it. And somehow what happens is it starts to like just become this realization when you take that and you apply it with experience and and it starts to just form these things out and there's there's so much psychology in it on the surface of it you start to go okay yeah it's a sales process but when you have some background like what you're talking about you start to go damn and and not to sound arrogant but you start to think there's some kind of genius stuff in here like, yep. how does that psychology that he just talked about, how did he figure out how to make that and be part of it? Yep. It's because of all these other references kind of coming together. And then you 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 have experience to to mesh it out a little bit and hash it out a little bit. Well, I, mean, that's, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you can read and listen to these podcasts and all this yeah. stuff all day long. But when it comes, especially sales, I think, and sales and marketing, but sales especially and Jonathan's, you know, he sells in front of people at boardroom tables and everything else. Mm -hmm. I've sold in home. I've sold in print. You've sold face to face, belly to belly. And it's one thing to read about it. And it's another thing to like 
experience it and to sit across and see a human face, even, even more so than copy, right? You can get results and numbers back, but there is something about in-person selling mm -hmm. that just gives you the wisdom that you cannot get any other way. You can't. No doubt. And even it's in just, copy, you got to do it. You've yeah. got to fail at it. You've got to, you've got to learn from other things and instead of just copying and regurgitating things, yep. you've really got to go through some experiences and, and learn if you want to, I mean, be great, you know, because you can learn fundamentals. You can, you can, you know, read some Gary Halbert and some follow some John Carlton, uh, you know, and, and get some fundamentals from them, but you still got to kind of go through your experience. And really that's the, only way you're really going to learn it. And then it doesn't mean you're going to be able to teach it either. It doesn't mean you're going right. to be able yeah. to, to, you know, pass that on to people, you know? So yeah, I, I think it's important across the board. And, and when you're looking for somebody to learn from that experience piece of it is extremely important. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't start out writing ads and especially as, as it relates to digital ads, because that's the, you know, the rave. Um, but what happened was I have an understanding of our prospects that's deeper than any agency that's out there. Right. Because I deal, I've dealt with thousands and thousands of them. I still deal with them today. I'm the director of marketing sales for Farrell's extreme body shaping. And I still deal with them. I still, we, we have, uh, almost 60 locations across the country. So, so how many, so I, I still how, deal with it. I think this is really important for like a lot of listeners who have not, done face-to-face belly-to-belly selling. I've told my copywriters that, you know, work for me in my agency as like, you need to go get a part-time job selling Kirby vacuum cleaners or oh, something. Yeah. If you can do that. Now, you know, I did yeah. say that membership sales was the hardest thing, <laughs> but that might be a close second or there might be a tie in there. I, I tell you, timeshare is pretty tough. I've done timeshare. So I've no, done timeshare. You know time the thing with timeshare though is you, 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 you keep them in and it's almost like you ain't letting them out until they say yes. Yeah. It's, it's more like a wrestling Kirby's match. kind of like that too. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm not leaving your house. Yeah. And you got all the little tricks. You put the little suitcase out on the, uh, it, the driveway to, to, to signal that I'm having some issues over here. And the manager yeah. rolls in, Hey, you're going to lose your job. You know, like all these little hard sell tactics that they use. Oh yeah. I know a lot. Sure. About you got, now my, you got guys on XM selling how to get out of timeshares. I mean, so that's yeah. the thing. Like, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's um, but yeah, I was, like there's something about face to face selling because you get the instant feedback. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in copy, you get an overall feedback. If you if you sell something online, you see the conversion rate numbers. You see that stuff, but you don't get the line by line, furrowed brow. Right. Arms crossed. The non the nonverbal, which is all the nonverbal because, stuff. Because because even on the over the phone, you can't get the you can't get all the nonverbal communication because you can sense things, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's why I love I hate getting on the phone call with people. I'd I'd rather sit face to face with somebody because yeah, so much can be said for nonverbal communication. Like you said, Sean, if they, you know, furl the brow, if they um you know, roll their eyes, you know, scratch like, their nose. What, yeah. you know, roll their eye, you know, if they sit back in their chair, you know, mm -hmm. um, th that tells me everything right there in a conversation. Yep. And yep. it gives me some kind of cues during that conversation of which way to go just by the way they're shifting. Yeah, you can, their chair. And you learn to like instantly pivot. Right. And, mm -hmm. and you, yeah. you develop this, I think, second sense. Absolutely. Of like, if I say this, that usually doesn't work out well. And, mm -hmm. And in copy, I don't, I don't know that you get that line by line experience like you do in face to face sales. You, you know what I mean? You so, try to figure it out, but you, right? Did it's, that it, one line really piss people off? Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> like stand up comedians, right? It's like they right. practice their set and they know each joke and and which joke's going to perform the best. So they put their best first, their second mm -hmm. best last, their third best in the middle. You know, there's a very clear structure for comedians to to pull that off. So yeah, it's, if I could give people listening any advice, it's like, as painful it is, as it is, I know <laughs> we're in a pandemic world or wherever we're at in this world. Like <laughs> when we're allowed to go back out and get yourself a face-to-face -face selling job 
or at mm-hmm. very least like an on the phone selling job, zoom selling sure. job. Yep. Cause you will learn so much so fast. Like you don't even have to, mm-hmm. you don't even have to make sales. I mean, it's fun right. if you do, but you'll learn so much so fast. Yeah. All right, you know so Eric, also, you'll learn, you'll learn what you're made of. You'll learn how to get through tough, challenging That's situations. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it is difficult to, especially in most sales jobs, they mm-hmm. don't train you. Right. You know, mm-hmm. this, this, no, they don't. I got awards all over the place. So th- you figure it out. My little diamond ring I got for being on sales leadership. Council. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got a plaque up here. You know, you know, I didn't get training from those companies until after I won those awards. <laughs> yeah. I chose the way it goes. How ass backwards is that, man? And then they untrain you. They untrain you. Yeah, Yeah. they're like, I'm gonna hire a salesperson, and bam, good luck, go get some sales. It you you just learn. It's very that is a very difficult thing to 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 succeed at. But you you learn how to deal with those those you know people fear rejection or they feel one of the biggest things they fear. I'll tell you right now in sales, they fear what might happen they're making it up Mm -hmm. it's it's a they're they're prejudging the response to what they're doing before it even happens and so they stop before they even do it like oh i'm gonna say this and they're gonna think i'm being salesy well did you say it no well how do you know there's the thinking how that's how do you know that's gonna happen you gotta do it you know like Right. Don't that's part of the reason it. you were you were comfortable. You you know, you shared the example earlier. The person said, I'll get back with you, or you were like more than happy to to say, Okay, I'll put that off. Like you were chalking that up. I'll get that I'll get All that right. sale another day, but <clears throat> but you were comfortable pushing that off because it you were avoiding the fear or the anxiety of having to confront them on why not today, right? Yeah. So the, conf- the confrontation piece, they think it needs to be aggressive. But right. I thought when somebody tells me they're coming back tomorrow or, or calling <laughs> tomorrow, that that was real. Yeah. Like I was really, that's a sale, you know? Yeah, right. And a lot of us think that. Right. Oh, yeah. They think, okay, you know what's going to happen? The prospects are going to go home. They're going to think about it. What they're going to do is they're going to get their whiteboard out. You know, they watch <laughs> Russell Brunson on his whiteboard. And they're going to do all of these calculations. That's right. And they're not because they they're aren't. thinking about you the whole time after they're, after that meeting. You think 100%. they're going to do the Ben Franklin close on themselves, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, here's the pros, here's the cons, right? Oh, exactly. I need to go back. Oh, this is obviously for me. I need to go back and talk to Russell, Eric, Eric. Sorry, right? Look at your last name there. <laughs> but um, yeah. So like, okay. So let's get back to the five points we talked about. Um, number one is uncovering the fear of showing up. Number two is understanding what they really fear their problem um three is allowing them to experience what you get so what's step four well i want to just clarify a couple things one is about getting the lead to an opportunity whether it's fear or whatever it might be right so explain that a little bit more so everybody they start out there's a they're in there's an interest but Mm -hmm. there's there that doesn't interest doesn't necessarily equal opportunity Opportunity means I need to have a conversation. I need I need to get them to come see me. I need to turn that lead into an opportunity. Okay. So in our business, in the fitness industry, the opportunity comes from them actually showing up. Right. That makes sense. So like you're doing some lead gen, whether it's postcards or, you know, Facebook ads, whatever it is. Say, hey, come in for your free three-day pass or whatever it is. Yep. Or take 10 pounds off or yeah. before, you know. Beach whatever season. they, whatever you do to get them to raise their hand, right? And then, but to, yeah, and I think that's a lot of things people miss is like now you got to convert them to actually get it just to show up in front of you, right? Yeah. And here's Which the is, other thing: there's a lot of stuff out there. Oh, we can get X amount of leads, cool. But what do you do with those leads? Mm. Because if you don't convert them and you don't get them to the opportunity stage, you may never see them again. Yep. You may not. So you really got to high, have a high um, conversion rate from lead to opportunity. So that's an important piece. And then the, the the second part is whether it's a fear or whatever it might be, it's about understanding what it is that's important to them and knowing what their objections are going to be 
before they come up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the reason I talked about their goal is because that's motivation and commitment. That's a an obstacle. Well, can I do month to month? Do I have to do it today? Well, I don't know if it's that important to me. That's an obstacle. Significant others an obstacle. Schedules an obstacle. Locations an obstacle. This is our industry. You have right. specific obstacles for your industry. Mm -hmm. They come up all the time. Why wait until the end to try to overcome that when you know what it's going to be? This blew my mind in our industry. Everybody would wait. Here it comes. I'm going to wait for them to say they got to check their schedule. Why? You know they're going to say it. So before they train, before they do anything, I'm going to go, hey, listen, can you? does this work in your schedule? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Before you show price or any of that stuff. So that's important for other industries and other businesses to understand what are those things that hold people back from doing business with you? Get those answered before they try your product. Yeah. Once they yeah. try it, now they're expecting to be sold and they're not going to give you good answers. They're not going right. to give you honest answers. Buyers are liars. When money's on the table, they will lie to you. Oh, I got to check my schedule. <laughs> you mm -hmm. got to check it. Get your phone out. I know it's in your phone. You're one of two things. Either you're very busy and you have a very tight schedule, which means it's on your phone. Or you're not busy and you don't no. got to check anything because you're not right. busy. So, right. you know, it's a bunch of BS. Yep. So they try it out. Now, four is about recommending a program or an option that solves whatever problem it is they have. Mm -hmm. It's about making a recommendation. You know, Seth Godin calls... There was a book, Seth Godin. Uh, I know you guys are familiar with him. Um, I love his stuff. He had a book that he wrote called Permission Marketing. Mm -hmm. I call this permission selling. Because I'm asking you if it's okay to now recommend a program. Based on everything you've experienced so far. Location works. Schedule's awesome. Your significant other's supportive and, and going to be behind you. You got very strong reasons for doing it. You tried to work out. You loved it. So if I can show you a membership option that's affordable and fits in your budget, would you like to take advantage of it on day one? I don't care yeah. if it, they got a five-day pass or what they got. Yes, yeah, so All the that's... planets are lined up. Can I recommend something for you? Give me permission. And see, the thing is, when they give you the permission, now they're open. Yeah. They're not going, okay, Show me the well, money, you, man. You've given them the power of choice to move forward or not. They feel in control. Exactly. But you're in control. That's exactly. the big difference. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you can control a situation by seemingly not controlling it, that's a very powerful thing. That's very, yeah. That's yep. huge. Yeah. I mean, mm. it, like that's like hit your little back 30 seconds button on your podcast <laughs> app and like listen to that again. Cause like that's an, you might have to hit it twice, but right. that's like an important point. And a lot of people are scared to do that. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of new salespeople are scared to do that. Cause you're like, Oh my God, what if they say no? Well, they're going to say no anyway, if you don't do it. Right. They're cause they're going to come up again. With, yeah. Cause they're going to, you're just going to, you know, you're going to get to the end and they're going to say no. And you won't know why you got to have these checkpoints along the way. I just had this happen. So one of our top salespeople in our organization at Farrell's, I'll give her a little shout out. Her name's Shan Conway. She's amazing. Um, when I tell you she's an amazing salesperson, for the last four weeks, her now show- Now you're going to throw her under the bus, right? <laughs> no, no. Okay. You can't throw this girl under the bus because she's amazing. But her show up rate, she's had a 100% show up rate for three weeks and she had a 90% show up rate on another week. And I'm not talking about two appointments and that I'm talking multiple double mm -hmm. digit appointments, amazing, amazing salesperson. But here's what happened. Somebody came in, they tried the program out and you got to understand their prospects. They have fears. They have apprehensions. They've been judged. They don't know if they can do it. And this girl was doing the workout and had a panic attack. Mm. And it rattled her a little bit. Okay. So she continued with the work. She went to the bathroom, came back, continued with the workout, finished it, loved everything. Even though she had the panic attack, she, she loved everything and was like, you know what? Show me the membership options. And so Shannon shows her the membership option. And here comes the excuse train. 
okay, yep, let me, you know, uh, let me see if it's in my budget. Let me see this. Let me see that. And Shannon started judging based on what had happened. Well, if I try to push, maybe she'll have another panic attack. Maybe uh -huh. she started creating all these judgments of what might happen if I do this. Right. When the reality is, if somebody has a panic attack, if that doesn't tell you they need it more than anything, they're that scared. They're, you know what I mean? Like, so again, it's, it's they judge the outcome. It happens even to good salespeople. Sure. You start to judge this outcome when you really just need to make sure that you're you're following a process and sticking with it, mm -hmm. you know? So it's very, very important to understand that. Not Don't judge the outcome. Do it. Yeah. And you'll, you'll also see it's not as scary as it seems when you start doing it. You know, oh, I, I don't know. I don't want to call people because they're going to yell at me, hang up on me. What's the worst they're going to do? Um, yeah, probably hang up on me. Okay. I just did this with another salesperson. I said, how many times you been hung up on, dude? He's like, uh, 10. I was like, 10? 10, like this week or today? He goes, no, like forever. I go, For <laughs> forever, dude. What, what? Are you kidding me? That's like not even getting having it happen to you, man. <laughs> yeah, how are you, you scared of? Just get over it. Come on, let's go. It, it ain't even <laughs> happening to you. And the grand, but you start to you start to project it. You start to think, sure. oh, you know, uh, I'm prejudging the outcome, you know? Yeah. So you gotta. You got to just deal with what's in front of you and well, not judge what might happen. In her situation, that was probably out of the ordinary. You know, somebody had a panic attack. You know, oh, totally. just like, you don't, you don't, there's some, there's certain things you don't prepare for. There's a normal, there's probably a lot of things that you do prepare for, but that's probably one of those things that kind of out of the ordinary. It, it throws that, you for a little, or, or a that prospect that will say an objection, mm -hmm. that they'll say it just a different way. And it throws people way off. And I'm like, this is the exact same thing as yeah. saying I got to talk to my husband. Yeah, right. It's the same thing, but they said it in a different way. In a different and it way, threw yeah. you off. But same yeah. thing. Yeah, I had a conversation this week with a uh, with a Verizon excellent salesperson, and and I always appreciate. It. I'm not one of those guys that'll hang up on salespeople if they are good at what they do when they're lousy at what they do then i don't mind i don't have a problem hanging up on them but this yeah. this one was pain. yeah right exactly we need to like put them out of their misery but uh right. th but this one was really good she first of all she provided value beforehand before she started selling in the conversation by being helpful but the uh but man she was really good because what she was offering in her sales approach was basically a protection coverage for all of your, um, not only all of our Apple devices, which we have nothing but Apple and Macs in our household. Yeah. I'm so it was a protection plan. I said, well, listen, we already have Apple Care. So how are you going to be any different? I mean, it's like adding a layer of protection on to something I already have. And she's like, well, it'll protect in addition to your Apple products, it'll protect your TVs and all, you know, you have smart, if you have smart TVs and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I don't really think I need that. And, um, but she was really good. She was like, well, she started, you know, basically going through the value. It's like she went to almost take no for an answer. I'm like, uh, you know, you're really good at what you do because she followed. She didn't every it's like everything I said she had an answer for. And yeah. and it wasn't like contrived. I mean, it wasn't like some, you know, BS contrived answer. It was like really legitimate. And I was impressed with her. And I even told her, even though I didn't make a decision there, I was like, you know, let me think about this and let, read all the fine details because I feel like I'm buying something I don't need, but you've made it sound like something that I might do, you know, but obviously oh, you're, she, you're she lost there because she didn't get the sale you're, on the spot. You're <laughs> killing her worse than anybody. Hanging up on her wouldn't have been a bad because it's like, you're a great salesman, but I'm not buying from you. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst. That's the worst. Dude. Yeah. You know? Great like, presentation. Great presentation. Nice. Oh, Eric, that was a That's great right. presentation. But here's I really the thing. appreciate if, it. If she's on the if she's ever about to get fired, they can just every all those call calls are recorded. So they just play the conversation <laughs> yeah. and know she did a good job. <laughs> the thing is, it's like, why would you want that? See, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Why would you want extended coverage? Right. Yeah, that's what I asked. And but so, she made, I mean, she made some legitimate, uh, she made some legitimate arguments if, if I had certain other devices. Uh, but as I tried to explain to her, 
you know, almost everything we use is Apple and it's under Apple care. So I was like, I don't think I need that, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, but, there are some people, but she, she left, she left me wondering if my Apple care protection did cover everything. You know, I started questioning that, um, if I, you know, Apple care was the, the right, the right way to go that's based on what they offer. Yeah. yeah. That's where she needed to get a little deeper. Yeah. Yep. Could If she sensed that she could have, Really, dug oh, yeah, into that and yeah, she could have dug in really, really well because I was yeah. starting to so one. If you're staying on, the, if you're staying on the phone, that tells me on some level you have mm -hmm. an interest in something better, absolutely, right? or you're not staying on the phone, you don't have time to be messing around and having you know some kind of chat with somebody randomly, right? You're staying on yeah. the phone for reason. Something intrigued you about your Apple Care that maybe there's some kind of right. I don't know, little opening catch there. yeah there's a yeah. catch 100 no, because everybody I mean, I, I my time's valuable her time's valuable and usually i'll tell salespeople right up front if they call i'll just say listen man not only is my time valuable but i feel like your your per your time is valuable as a salesperson and we don't need to go any further you need to be making other calls yeah right I mean, here's, yeah. here's the thing jonathan let me ask you something real quick if there's one thing about apple care that you would like to improve, what would it be? I don't know. Cause I mean, I've never, you know, that, that, you know, I don't really know what I would improve because I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like it's, you know, some of that added protect, it's like life insurance. What about this? What, what, what would I improve about think life insurance? Missing from it? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think it's your other devices? Like is, what do you think's missing from it? Like what happens if you lose your TV? Is mm -hmm. Apple Care covering that? No, because it's not an Apple TV. <laughs> so here's the thing I would think that, you know what? You're a smart dude. But if you lose your TV, Apple TV doesn't mean jack anything because you got to yeah. have a TV. I'm the same way. I got Apple everything. Although my refrigerator, it, it's a Samsung. It's got the whole TV. You could talk to it. It's connected mm -hmm. to the ring doorbell. I, I love technology stuff. Uh, yeah, the, I'm, I'm all about home automation. I don't care if the government's <laughs> watching me. I could care less. I love it. I like being able to, it's kind of streamline. Yeah. Yeah. I like being able to see what's inside my fridge from my phone. I like being able to tell my, <laughs> my faucet to turn on by just saying, Hey, turn on. I love that stuff. So I don't care about that, but it doesn't connect to Apple and all that stuff. Yeah, you gotta have an app and all this stuff. It's not Apple TV, right? So yeah. you could, you could find a way in through that because maybe what I would do is I would find out, Hey, those things aren't, covered through Apple. And if you could cover all of the things that Apple care covers, plus these additional things, and it didn't cost you anything else, mm -hmm. it just adds some more peace of mind to everything else you got going on. Yep. And I'm not saying cap cancel Apple care. I would never, I would never say that. You I think in my mind, that. it's always like Apple, Apple never goes down in value. Like their products last forever. Uh, or so it seems. Everything yeah. else seems to just give out like after a year. So I'm like, yeah. what the point, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, if you think about it, Aflac has made an entire business on what medic, you know, regular health insurance does not cover. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right. All, all the problems the that, yeah. All the problems that pop up mm -hmm. when you use your health insurance, that does exactly what it says they'll do. So my guess is there's a, there's probably something like that, 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 yep. you know, Verizon could be using that says, Hey, cause half their customers are probably Apple people. Right. I mean, right. probably a good chunk yeah. of them. Maybe more. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so, um, you know, hopefully they would take that back to a manager or something like that and be like, this was objection. I couldn't get past. Let's mm -hmm. do some research on Apple care. Yeah. And, th and that's going to happen. Right. Eric. I mean, you're going to hear something that you don't, you don't have an answer for, but the difference between a good salesperson and great salesperson is they're going to go home that night and they're going to research and they're going to figure out, that's they're gonna point. look. They're gonna read through everything on Apple Care, and find that one thing that is beyond reasonable doubt, and be like, "I'm gonna use that every time Absolutely. I hear the word Apple Care." Yep. And yeah, she like, could have said something like, "Oh, by the way, did you know Apple Care doesn't? You know, here's one thing: cover lightning. It doesn't yet. cover lightning. Right. Or there's a lot of times with the insurance companies, what they do is, I know because this happened to me. I had my previous uh address we got robbed broken robbed we had coverage on everything right and they're like oh well that video camera we're gonna give you x percent and i'm like what, x percent what do you mean x percent man the thing was freaking a thousand dollars you're not giving me 200 bucks for it 
It was a thousand bucks. I got the receipts and everything. Now we're going to give you X percent. And then you got to buy it first before we pay you. <laughs> so maybe there's some something in there where mm -hmm. I can look at this Apple Care deal and go, okay, here's the thing with Apple Care. You have to actually go out and go out of pocket. Where with us, if something happens, we send you a check. I, I don't sure. know that's the reality of things, but I'm right. just saying there's something there. They have a competitive advantage on some level. You yeah. don't even know what that is right now, Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to give her two pints as a salesperson. <laughs> well, now I now that you now that you say this, I probably should give her one, one and a half to Call two. her back. <laughs> so you know what? I got to tell you something. I said you were good. You're not good. <laughs> you need to do some homework. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Here's you should have you should have drilled me. You should have drilled in on this Apple Care thing cuz I that's step your game up. Come on. Yeah. You know, All it right. remind it reminds me of the uh, you know, I'm sure you've seen the movie Glengarry Glen Ross where right. the, 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 the classic on, scene. I seen every sales movie there is. That's that So, you know, the scene the, the scene that always sticks out to me is the Al Pacino scene where he's like he's like running that uh, the guy the manager down the road near the end of the movie, but he he tells him, you know, he's trying to work out a, a guy that's basically having buyer's remorse and the manager just runs his mouth off and kills the sale basically. And he, he turns to the guy and he said, he said, you never, you never open your mouth until you know the shot. Right. And so that's, that's it. That's a good lesson in any, any well, sales approach. You know, what's funny about Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. So I know, I, I mean, I'm like, I could line for line a lot of stuff in that movie. <laughs> Inside my membership sales academy, I actually have the clip of um, of uh, Alec Baldwin doing the little speech for the salespeople. Right. Mm -hmm. And in 2021, <laughs> all the things he's saying in there, you know, I mean, are, 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 it's, it's cancel out type stuff, you know? So I had to go back and find like a clean version. And I'm like, Man, ninety percent of what he's saying isn't even coming through right now. I don't know if this is going right. to resonate as much as it is because he just went like oh, yeah. ballistic on those guys. Right. And that's like, you know, if you've never been in a sales environment, and I think it's like, so my biological father grew up in, uh, was a drill sergeant in the in the army. Okay, cool. uh, I I, I yeah. never got along with the guy because uh, he, <laughs> he tried to deal with me like he's a drill sergeant. <laughs> um, but he was old school, you know, Vietnam yeah. type stuff. So like you, you don't want to listen. He'll fight you. Like that's just how he handled stuff, you know? Sure. And, um, it's, it's all changed. And I think in sales too, like, it's one of those things like back in the day, man, like you get, it's like abusive, mm -hmm. but when you get to a level like Al Pacino in that movie, when he did, when they were doing the sales meeting, he wasn't even there. Right. And no, it's like, is. you know, didn't need to be gonna say to him, you're going to fire him. I don't think so. Cause he's the top guy. That's right. Yep. Uh, it was and that's one off. of the things with sales. That's such a, an awesome, awesome thing. And what I loved about uh, sales was it gave me freedom. You are never going to fire me. Even if you hate me and I've had yeah. people, I've had owners and managers that hated me for whatever reason. I don't listen. Well, that's I do right. my own thing, but I close sales. Yep. So I got to put up with this guy. And, you know, I had one sales manager one year who I never showed up to these sales meetings on time. I, I, I hated him because yeah. what I got to do, I got to tell all these other guys who suck how I'm doing so well and try to teach them something. I ain't getting paid <laughs> off. I'm not eating off of what's their, on their plate. You know what I mean? Like, That's right. I, I got I'm, I'm, I'd rather do a meeting than deal with you guys for an hour <laughs> and listen to your crap. But he, he sat me down he, and his name was Wayne Gordon. He said, hey, listen, Eric. Uh, I'm never going to fire you. But what you're doing is, is you're, you're telling everybody else that this isn't important. Right. And for them it is, it's not important for you because you don't need it, but I need you to be there as a leader. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, did he, that's a sales manager who's, who's a great sales manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's not one of those guys that sucked at selling and ended up being a sales manager. Like a lot of them are, he oh, yeah. ended up being, you know, he really just, and I was like, man, I can't, I got to show up then. I got to be on time and I got to do those things. But yeah, I, that's one of the things I love about sales. When you can close sales, you have a lot of freedom with things. Yeah. Yep. Because who's going to fire a guy who's selling 
You're the rainmaker. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, you, just hit, you deal. We with gotta them. hit um we gotta hit point five. So we haven't hit step five yet. So yep. I'm taking notes. We haven't hit step five, so we need to do that before we wrap up. Well, here's the you know what's interesting about that? Is hopefully you never get the five. Okay. <laughs> because if you make a recommendation and they buy five doesn't even show up. Very nice. So the interesting part about not really getting to it is hopefully you don't have to get to it. <laughs> getting to five is about dealing so with if you're getting to five, five you're looking for another uh occupation right <laughs> uh not necessarily because sometimes they'll tell you oh my husband's so supportive of it and then oh i got to talk to my husband at the end yeah right? because now money you know my husband's supportive to a point now you're asking me to pay xyz amount he's gonna flip out mm -hmm, right and vice versa i don't want to get you know the objections, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to have people going, oh, yeah, well, you got to talk to your husband. It could be either way. You could talk to your wife, too, okay? You could talk to your girlfriend. <laughs> you could talk to your turtle. You know, I saw a CarMax commercial <laughs> with the guy has got to talk to his turtle, and I was like, if that isn't dead on for what people say, it's I don't know sure. what it is. Somebody's got to talk to somebody. But it happens sometimes. So that fifth step is about dealing with those sales obstacles that yeah. still might come up. There still might be a little bit of hesitation about moving forward. There still might be a fear about doing whatever it is that you're offering and that not working or not succeeding at it. In our industry, it's huge because they've, like I said earlier, they've typically failed at this goal before. Mm -hmm. So when you failed at something before, you have a history of failure. You don't think, oh, well, I, I'm going to be successful now. Because I failed. I talked about my book, Failing English Twice. It's one of the things that held me back from writing a book. Yeah. You know, and, and yep. it, that, that's just a natural thing. So there's a natural hesitancy sometimes at the end, even with everything else lined up. And you still have to answer that. Yeah, I've told my copywriters that, like, I think that's one of the biggest thing a lot of copywriters miss is that it's not about the product. It's not about it's always about the prospect, right? I mean, sometimes it's about the product. The product just sucks. Yeah. But usually it's about the prospect and the fact, especially if you're the older your avatar gets, the more this is true. Mm -hmm. They failed at things. They haven't succeeded at things. And now they think it's not just bad products. They think it's their faulty. Mm -hmm. They're messed up. And if you don't cover that, and that's why the, probably the most successful line in like, um, marketing is it's not your fault it's works so well it works in sales too yeah, yeah. right we use so, it's part of the sales process on the front end of it because one of the things i'm going to ask you on step two is what have you tried in the past to accomplish this goal and they're going to say well i tried diet pills i don't i'm just using random something right yeah okay why hasn't that worked for you well because of xyz Okay, so you're not a nutritionist, I would assume, right? Right. No, I'm not. You're not a pharmacologist. I don't even know if that's a real thing. I just made that. I just said that because it sounds it's like a cool word, though. Sounds, sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But you don't know what to prescribe yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Well, then it's not your fault that you failed. You don't know what the hell you're doing. You know, you're trying, but it's not your fault not knowing. And that's, one of those things, oh my God, this guy, you know, gets me. Mm -hmm. It really ain't my fault. It's like trying to diagnose or prescribe. It's like these people who go on the internet. My wife loves doing this. Google. Oh, here's what the problem is. Google, go, you know, and I'm like, every time she says something, I'm like, God, oh, you, you did your Google homework, right? You know, like, yeah, she's a therapist, you know, it's like she's a very well educated person, but she pulls this Google stuff out, and I'm like, I'm not, you can't, you need an expert. I mean, don't tell me what you read on Google, okay? You know, it's one of those things. But, um, you know, what have you tried in the past and why it hasn't worked is a big, big deal. And you use that. Mm -hmm. It's not their fault. It really isn't. They're trying their butts off. Yep. There's a, there's a, in coaching, I do, I do some coaching as well. And one of the, one of the core beliefs you have to have as, as a good coach is people are doing the best they can. If they could do better, they would. Yeah. And like, you have to really like believe that 
even if they that's seem like they're lazy, that. like, well, they're lazy because that's the best they can do. Cause the, maybe the way they were raised, the parents they had, like, you know, maybe they just never been taught discipline. Maybe they've never been taught these things that you just take for granted. So if you can see them as 100%, and I think this is really important in sales. If you can see them as a hundred percent complete, you know, maybe some flaws, but, but acts, absolutely perfect human being for what they've been through and where they are. You can have a lot of empathy and you can just honestly see, okay, well, obviously of course you haven't lost weight yet, you know, sure. because of this, this, or this. Right. 100%. And you can have this, this empathy and you can get this like heart to heart connection instead of this just tactic technique connection, which is the same thing in great copy, right? It's like you, that's the art. Yeah, that's the art part of the of the science. Exactly. The science is the fundamentals of knowing the steps. The yep. art is that connection piece. Yes. Yeah. If you've ever looked at true, I'm talking like art that moves you. And I have I have. I've seen Renoir's up close. I've seen Picasso's paintings that literally give you it's hard to I'm not an I'm not like an art uh connoisseur but i've experienced artwork that has literally moved me from looking mm -hmm. at it yeah and you're like th there's emotion in it there's feeling in it there's there's science in it too but that heart piece that you just talked about yeah that is the difference between a painting that is worth nothing and a painting that a country would have to finance Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's the same thing in a movie that has basically the same plot, but the acting really taps into the heart as opposed to just kind of B level actors that are just going through the motions and following the script. Right. right. Like you just feel, or even like the way you edit, you know, I, I love watching American Idol and like every episode, the last, you, you know, the last one on each episode is going to be a tearjerker, right? Cause they got to yeah, get you yeah. coming back. And like, I'm a sucker, like every single time I'm like the, the backstory and the way they Bro, edit the, the, the yeah, the, the way the producers put everything together and tell their story and the backstory is like, like, I'm just so proud that these people have decided to step out and go after their dream that mm -hmm. it just gets me all like teary eyed and lump in the throat. And I'm like, whew, man, these Texas yeah. allergies are ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. But you know, it's but it's You're like no baby, tell, it's allergies, man. No, yeah. you don't have any allergies. Stop it. You're crying. You're yeah, little. and it's like yep. but you could tell the same story dry and without oh the, sure. Yeah. And and it does nothing. Right. And like you said, sales is the same way. You've got to learn the science, but then as you get experience, as you get wisdom, which only comes from experience of sitting face to face, belly to belly, mm -hmm. then that's the level it comes out. And that's when you go from, you know, 25% close rate to 50, 60, you know, whatever. 70, percent. 80, 90. We yeah. have crazy numbers. You know, it's yeah. funny that you mentioned that too, because one of the things that happens when you start talking to people about the real reasons why they want to lose 20 pounds or 30 or whatever it might be, there's emotional attachment to it. Mm -hmm. And there's tears that come. Absolutely. And that throws salespeople off. The first time they experience that, they're like, they don't know what, oh, to what do. the hell do I do? They're crying. I'm definitely not getting to sale. I made yeah. them cry. When the reality is you will, that that's even, you know, not that you're trying to make people cry, but you're trying to make people to tap that emotion mm -hmm. that makes that goal important. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah like that reason for wanting to do business. With yeah. You because, because I've got a friend who's a, uh, he, he's, he's actually a bariatric surgeon. So he talks about that with weight loss, but he talks about the emotion behind it. Cause he would, you know, whenever he interviews, um, people that are, you know, looking to have surgery, you know, that's the thing that he asked them is why do you want to lose the weight? And he taps into those stories and he get, and they get emotional. I mean, it's like, I just want to hold, I just want to be able to walk my, you know, granddaughter or my daughter down the aisle, or yep. I want to hold my grandkids. And that's like that he hones in on that. You know, like, why is that important? And, and then they get, he's like, almost every time they get teary eyed, just talking about, it's usually something personal and family related. Yep. Yep. Um, it, it, it's always that. Yeah. 
it's always personal. It's always same. And, and it's interesting too, because I mentioned that one of the things, you know, that, that selling a membership is extremely difficult. We're talking mm -hmm. about something very personal to them. And then at the end, we're talking about money. Right. You know, we're not talking about a cell phone. We're not talking about a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. We're talking about two two things that most people don't want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So that's one of the things that makes it difficult. Mm -hmm. But again, when you have a process in place and, you know, the, the one that I've developed over the last 30 years, it it, it it's from experience of, of getting, of, of being in front of people, seeing the reaction, like you mentioned, you know, in a good comedy routine like oh that worked or i'm never saying that again and you know that got an egg thrown at me or whatever whatever they're throwing nowadays all of those things um you 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 can it's like a cumulative experience that you go this is how this needs to go sure and mm -hmm. then you're going to tweak some things here and there as it as it pans out you know but um that is just you know one of those things where it's just so important we've talked, we've mentioned it a bunch of times of just being in front of people and, and, and having that experience and really getting down to what it is. Okay. What is the reason why they want your service? Copywriting, sales, what it's the same thing. Why that ad has to speak to what it is they're trying to accomplish and or avoid. Right. You know? Absolutely. And in their words, not in your own words, like it's right. got to, it's got to mm -hmm. be what's on their mind. So. Exactly. All right. Well, um, Eric, I think you may have hit the the new most the longest episode. Like I think we just close. I think we probably went over pretty, pretty close. close. Yeah. So. I do that all the you know every podcast I'm on, I tend to do that. I don't know what you know <laughs> it is, but so you're yeah, just passionate I, man. You're just passionate. Yeah. I tend to do that, man. That's and you good know stuff. another thing, we tend to be one of the top episode so i'm really counting on this to go to the top i like it i'm gonna be like i'm it. gonna be looking for when it's released and i'm gonna be yep. going nuts i'm i mean i gotta be i gotta be on the top man we gotta do something about that so so we gotta ask how do people find out more about you and how do they get your book amazon okay i mean you know jeff <laughs> Bezos, book, not you right they can't order you uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I gotta, I gotta hook my Jeff Bezos, my, my man Jeff Bezos up with some dough. He's he's hurting right now. Yeah, I think he's he's like, uh, right. you know, number one richest guy ever yep. in the history of economics. So yeah, he may uh, have yeah. slipped a notch. He may be number two. Which yeah, yeah. you know what was He'd funny was one of the, one of the successful ads that I ran was was ripping on Jeff Bezos a little bit. It was like, hey. If you go to Amazon and get this, it's going to cost you 20 bucks, mm -hmm. but I'm about to give it to you for six bucks. And I know I'm probably going to make Jeff Bezos mad because I sell a lot of books through him, mm -hmm. but I think he'll be okay. And <laughs> it's kind of a, you know, little funny thing, but that was a copywriting thing that worked out well for me. An interesting thing about copywriting and sales is they're not super different. Nope. If you understand motivation and why people want to do things, I, I a lot of it really is about selling, but there there are some differences that you really gotta understand. But you, you gotta kind of with copy, you gotta go through the conversation kind of in advance and kind of pre. Yeah. Would you have to do in sales too? But you can let it unfold in real time. And copy, you have to yeah. kind of plan for it because you're not gonna get the other half of the conversation. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. So you can find Eric at sellingmemberships.com. His book, The Art of Selling Memberships, is on Amazon.com. Uh, it's a fairly new site, Amazon.com. If you haven't heard of it, just look it up. Got all kinds of cool yeah. stuff there. And uh, I think you'll just search for, Am for Art of Selling Memberships, and there will be Eric Charles Russell, number one bestseller, international number and one And here's bestseller. the thing. We were ranked number 30 in sales, in business sales, when we started today. Yeah. So when this goes out, we're oh, going to see where we end up. You're back to number one for sure. Let's do it. I mean, our one listener, they're passionate. They'll buy like six, they'll buy at least 50 copies. So if, if they're from like some, some, you know, random country, lose Eric? I maybe mean, his screen's blank. No, he's there. You went blank, oh, okay. but he's oh, there. Okay. Jonathan. So. Oh, there we yeah, go. Don't be blaming your blank on my, on me. <laughs> Come on. All right, Jonathan. Oh, yeah. Uh, Amazon. You can go to ericcharlesrussell.com. Also all okay. that stuff. 
Okay. I'm out there. You can find me. We'll post right. it Instagram. and I'll send you a link once once we get this out. YouTube. Did we accomplish our beer goal, by the way? I did. I got my two in. I'm on my third. There you Good go. Good night. I, I'm a. You're so stealthy it. with your pores there, Eric. No well, doubt. No, I thought, you know, he was talking the whole time. Like, the, I didn't want to have it interrupting anything. So I, I noticed, I'm looking at your window but in the background. I've noticed like the birds perching, you know, as we were talking. And yeah. so it looks like, is that a lake out behind your? Yeah. Okay. I cool. live on the water. I, nice. I like yeah. that. It's amazing. I'm 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 not used to to this. You can see, you know, I'm sur I'm literally surrounded. I'm on the Black River Bay right before mm -hmm. Lake Ontario. Yep. So the Black River is like this crazy ass river that you know you got to be like a level five kayaker to go down it. You know, whatever the hell that means. I've never sure. gone down the hard part. My little area is nice and calm because it's right before it hits uh, Lake Ontario. Mm -hmm. And, um, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I I'm used to, when I grew up, it was like, you could put your arms out and touch the houses, yeah. you know, that's the yeah. I'm city guy. Yep. Yeah. You know? So when I moved out here, I was like, man, this is crazy. I go out and there's lawns <laughs> and ducks and stuff out there. Like I got deer rolling up foxes and it, it's, it's right. wild. You know, that's the power of sales, baby. Right. There. Yeah. That's right. That's Write it. your own ticket. Write your own ticket. That you know what? I tell people that all the time. Sales is the one job where you write your own paycheck. Yeah, there's your next book title right there. Yep. Well, I do yeah. have another book. I'm gonna say one last thing before I go. You mentioned the 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 you know comics. They go out and they do their and they find out what works. And yeah. a lot of times they do this right before they're doing their Netflix special or back in the day it was the HBO special. Right. So I was like doing this to get my next book. Oh, that. That went well. I'm going to put that in the book. And then COVID hit, and it's like, now I'm not talking anymore. I'm not going out and doing spe speeches. And it's like, damn, we're, okay, I think I, I got 126 pages. So, you know, <laughs> I got to get back out there, which I will be speaking at the Fit Pro Growth Summit May 21st, which is in Scottsdale, Arizona. It's the ah, first one since COVID. First hit. one. Wow. Over nice. a year. Well over you know, a year. Uh, so, side, just side thing. I went out to dinner about, See, I went out to dinner twice this last week. I'm in Austin, Texas, and I got physical menus both times. Wow. No more QR codes. No, QR I was like, we are, we are <laughs> making progress. People. I didn't think go. Texas did anything. They were just like, oh, whatever, yeah. man. No, we, <laughs> Which I love, you know, Texas. Well, Austin, Austin's a little more. A little more New York. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way to put it. Thank you. They Thank might you for run you saving me. For saying that. Don't, you better yeah. watch out now. You're, you're, there's a mark on you There's now. plenty of room in Texas outside of Austin, so I'm fine. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, I love Texas. It was funny. You, in, the, in the beginning of this, you talked about how it's 13 hours from one to the next. Years ago, I did a tour with a band, and so we toured the whole U.S. And so we, were, we did some dates in Texas. Mm -hmm. We were doing literally like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the whole deal. When you get to Texas – and you're like, wait a second, it's it's 10 hours from one to the next. Like, <laughs> we gotta know we can't sleep tonight because yeah. it's not like New York, where it's like, oh, two hours later we're here, and then Massachusetts, four hours later, we're here. Yeah, it's like a whole three states basically that we're covering oh, yeah. crazy. in Texas. Yeah, when I when I did in-home sales, I covered everything north of I-20, also I-10. So from El Paso to to the Louisiana, Texas border, which that strip, the, that's the two widest points is it's like 15 hours across and then everything north up into Lubbock and Amarillo. A um, lot of, a lot of small towns, a lot of, a lot of face-to-face -face kitchen tables. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's uh, I did that for about two years. That was quite the education. So two years <laughs> is like 20 when you're selling vacuum cleaners, man. It's, yeah. I wasn't vacuum cleaner. I was selling uh financial products, but still like, Oh, how long table. did you do the vacuum cleaners thing? I did that like in college also. So cut co knives and some other stuff, yeah. but you know, so best education like, in the world. Yeah, for sure. Buy this vacuum cleaner. I'm going to cut you with this knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sell both at the same time. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, I'll let you take us out. Eric, it's been fun, man. Enjoyed having you on. And uh, like I said, I'll shoot you a link once we have this uh, published on Monday, early next week, man. Awesome. Appreciate shoot you guys over. having me. First podcast I ever did where I could drink beer. That's right. 
That's and right. I, by the way, I told my wife, I'm now the new co-host and we do a show every day. So at 4.30, <laughs> I start drinking. It, it was perfect. Thumbs up. Well, man, right. thanks for bringing a good beer on. Uh, and uh, we'll, I'll have to take note of that and see if I can find it. Uh, for your rating, Curry. if you gave it a five, anybody that gives a five, I, I'm I'm hunting that bad boy. Gotta down. hunt it down. Yeah, and I'm disappointed. I only got four, and I'm yeah. almost done. <laughs> I think I need to do. Keep going, man. Keep yeah. going. <laughs> All right, we'll let you go, man. Have a great weekend. All right, you too. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah, it. You bet. All right, good stuff. Good Absolutely, stuff. Yeah. Well, to all of our listeners out there, you can find us persuasion by the pint.com. Sean, we may break this one up again like we do because yeah. that's a pretty lengthy one. So we're getting part, into Tim Ferriss territory now. I'm part one, you. part two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Long form, baby. Um, but yeah, persuasion by the pint.com. You can find us on all of your platforms, Stitcher, iHeart, you name it. We got it. We're there. And uh, leave us some reviews while you're there. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. We got a good one coming up. All right. See ya. All right. And-